Hey, hey happy campers. campers. Welcome back to Camp Shady Bird. Week 37. Welcome to the Vegas episode. Ooh. Viva Las Vegas. Wow, that was iconic. You sound just like him. We did not see Elvis at all on this trip. Yeah, I didn't see any Elvis memorabilia, really. I didn't see an Elvis marriage chapel either. We also weren't really looking that hard, but we did see... All the glitz and glamour. We did, you guys. If you weren't aware, we were in Las Vegas this past week, and we decided, you know what? We need an entire episode dedicated to Nevada's most chaotic city, okay? We had a great time. We had both never been to Las Vegas, so if you've been before, I'm sure you're going to love some of these highlights. If you haven't been, it's going to be an exciting trip down a future memory lane for you, because Mm -hmm. we are going to tell you everything we loved, everything we hated, and everything in between. But I will say overall, my overarching like idea or thoughts on Vegas is obsessed Gorgina love amazing oh my god love it sequins feathers boobies all of it oh my god there was boobies at one point guys we'll get into that <laughs> oh my there was boobies at one point but uh for our patreon members this is probably going to be a recap because we did an entire vlog while we were there if you guys want to go see it because we're not going to get into all the nitty-gritty details but if you want to see it happening in real time go to patreon.com slash camp counselors because we've got a lot of vlog footage over there yeah it was a fun video 20 minutes of just straight chaos with all the visuals but we had a great time so let's just get right into it you guys the reason why we were in las vegas if you're not aware we we were kind of invited to see Katy Perry, kind of not. She thought we had tickets to her show. We didn't. She was like, I'll upgrade you. We had to buy tickets. It's a long story. It's in previous episodes. We'll get more into that a little bit later. But that was the reason why we did a two-day in Vegas. We flew in on a Tuesday. We had all Tuesday, all Wednesday, and then we left Thursday morning. So it was just two days in the city of... Angels. <laughs> what do they call it? Sin City. Oh, sin- literally Sin City. And I call we call Cincinnati that <laughs> Cincinnati, as a joke. Cincinnati, yeah. We call Cincinnati Sin City, and they're like, that's absolutely not what it's called. But no, this is the real... Sin Sin. City. Because people are there to be sinners. Yeah, sin happening everywhere, 360. Yeah, but 365. Really quickly, though, I thought I was going to be more sketched out, honestly, based on what I had heard. From like, I don't know, like the media. It's not that like scary of us. I guess there probably is. Yeah, I think if you're coming like from the Midwest or a suburban neighborhood and you've never been to like anywhere like Manhattan or been on the subway, it it can be scary, a frightening place. Like it's not safe all the time everywhere. You just have to be cautious. But I feel like we're cautious people. So we were expecting much worse. Yeah. And we were pleasantly surprised. Yeah. It's like if you've ever been in the Times Square subway station after eleven PM on a Saturday, that that is that that doesn't yeah. feel safe. Mm-hmm. That does not feel safe. But this was like great. So let's start with where we stay. Where do we stay, Johnny boy? We stayed at the win hashtag winning. Yeah, the win Las Vegas. It's like the win encore. Starting off with our recommendations here. I highly recommend this hotel. I will say it is at a higher price point than some of the other hotels in this strip, but I had done my research and everyone was saying this was the one to stay at. I also think the Bellagio would have been great or the Cosmo. But if you're looking for like, I'm trying to think about how I would describe the win aesthetic. It's definitely bougie for sure, but like very bright, very colorful, almost like circusy. Yeah. Like, I don't know. Not to be confused with Circus Circus down the street. Not to be confused with Circus Circus. I did think the vibes were incredible there. We get up to our room. It was like just, it was just gorgeous. And everything there is big. Like the hallways are big. The rooms are big. The egos are huge. The egos are huge. When you go to New York City and you stay in a hotel, you're lucky if you're getting a 10 by 10 room because it's just, everything is so jam-packed. But everything in Las Vegas, I did not expected to be as big as it is every casino every like restaurant is just massive Mm -hmm. giant so we loved we loved the win las vegas so if you're looking for like a little hotel wreck might i recommend that yeah also their napkins are like 600 thread count very soft very durable very pliable yeah they're like it's a thick thick napkin i had never been in a hotel where they have like an ipad like built in for the room and you pick it up and that's how you control like the tv the blinds the lights the the room service it was like okay okay i felt expensive in that hotel which i love that i want to go somewhere and feel like i'm getting my money's worth that was a ho- i think it was five hundred dollars a night so it was a thousand dollars for two days guys full transparency here. i'm giving you the full deets on this and that was midweek okay but i will say It felt like it was $500 a night there. So really impressed with that. So after we checked into our hotel, you know me, guys. I have to hit the ground running. I am not someone on vacation that cannot, like, do things. Some people are down to just relax and do nothing. I have to see everything because then I feel like I need to get my money's worth and I want to experience everything I've always dreamed about experiencing. And I had a lot of preconceived notions about what I thought Las Vegas was going to be. So I had to see it. 
with my own two eyes. And you're an itinerary girl. Like you love to have activities. You like to go from point A to point B and really just get everything on. But you were saying this was one of the first trips you took that you didn't have everything like planned out to a T, which I mean, I think it actually ended up working out pretty well. It did, but I will say I had a little sense of anxiety when we landed because we were just so busy before this trip and it was kind of last minute that I was like, when we got there, I was panicking. I was like, what are we going to be doing here? Because I hate standing on your phone looking for a restaurant on vacation. Like, where are we going to eat? And everyone's on their phone trying to, it's like, no, we should have already planned this ahead of time because now we're wasting precious core memories looking at an iPhone screen. But it actually all did work out. We ended up on the Las Vegas Strip after checking in. And the first hotel we checked out, you guys, was the world famous Venetian. Ooh, okay. I didn't know what to expect. They had the gondolas outside in the goddamn fountain. Much cleaner than I thought it would be. I was like, I was expecting murky, dark, gross water. Yeah. But but they had the gondolas and you were like, come on now, we have to go. Yeah. I saw, So you turn the corner and it basically opens up to like downtown, like, I don't know, Italian marketplace. I'm not sure where exactly in Italy they were trying to like recreate, but they were they were doing something accurate yeah. there. Um, and I saw the gondolas and I was like, once again, this is iconic Vegas. I want to do this. I don't care. So we get up to the counter. Counter, guess how much it was for a, a private gondola, which we shouldn't have done because no one was in line anyways. Yeah. We would have gotten a private one anyways. Yeah, so they had the two options where you can get a private gondola, four seats, and we would have like been guaranteed just two of them and they would have sent us on our way. Or we would have had to like possibly wait for two other people to come and ride with strangers, which would have been like half the price. But there was nobody in line. So we definitely, hey, we didn't know what we didn't know. And now we know. It was 95 degrees. And they were like, do you want to do the indoor ride or the outdoor ride? And I was like, well, the outdoor ride is really giving. So let's do the outdoor one because we weren't sure what the indoor one looked like. A hundred and sixty dollars, hundred and forty dollars. Yeah, I'm sorry, you guys. I do think it was overpriced, hundred percent. But it was fun. Yeah, it was really fun. We had Giovanni as a little a gondola guide. What's her name? Um, the gondola driver. Yeah, the boatsman, the captain, mm, the captain, captain of our gondola, Capitan. Capitan. What did you think about Giovanni? I thought he was great. He was definitely an ally. I couldn't tell ally. if that accent was real or not. I'm not gonna clock it because I mean, obviously, I can't even see. Vegas correctly. So his vernacular was spectacular, all that to say. Yeah. And yeah, he took us around. He was telling us about all the architecture that it's mimicking. They have the Big Ben there. And um, he sang to us. He sang to us twice. And I don't love being sung to. I do get a little tense because I know that they're doing their best and I'm trying to convey that I am really appreciative of it, but I feel like I don't know how to. So I'm like, just like overly smiling and like, thank you so much the entire time. Cause I just like, <laughs> don't know what to say as someone who sings to you like that. Like it was giving like, this is the night. What a beautiful night. He had a great voice. Yeah. Great vibrato. But it was like after the first 90 seconds of, of song, I was anxious. I was like, I really want to have a moment moment of not doing this yeah but and then he's he did he sang i think three times he, i was gonna say three as well yeah i thought it was two but now he's saying three i'm like no it was three yeah it was three it was pretty much the whole time there was no room for conversation there he's like i'm gonna sing to you baby i'm gonna give you a show yeah well the other gondola the other gondola captain was a woman and she recognized me from across the the waterway and she the was canal. the canal and she was like oh my god i love your tiktok and then giovanni our driver was like so What's this whole TikTok business? And I told him all about what I do for work. And then he's like, let me sing you a song, lovebirds. Um, it was really fun. I just think it was overpriced. And that's going to be the common theme here, you guys. Vegas is so incredibly expensive. If you want to go to like do nicer things or like kind of enjoy like some things that you know are going to be great. Every drink, every meal, every activity just seems a little bit overpriced, I will say. So if you're going to Vegas, you're thinking about going, make sure you really budget this because it's hard to do on a budget. Yeah. Because you want to drink and you want to eat and you want to experience it all. And everywhere you go is so expensive. And we're coming from New York prices and we were shocked. So it's like coming exactly. from the suburbs must be crazy. Exactly. New York is also very expensive. But I thought even this was more expensive than New York prices. Um, so after we did the Venetian, we um, kind of just like, kind of walked around the strip yeah, all night. Yeah, we bopped around to a couple different places, but you know where we went that we didn't have to spend a penny on? Yes, that we created lifetime memories with. Lifetime. The, but, 
<laughs> the Bellagio Water Show. What do they call it? The Bellagio Golden Shower? I don't know. The, yeah, that, we can call it the Bellagio Golden Shower. Have you guys heard of that? Where there's the water, the famous water show in front of the Bellagio. I was really excited for this. And by the time we had got there, it was like 11 o'clock in, in Las Vegas time, which means it was like 1 a.m. for us in New York City time. Yeah. I was so exhausted from walking around all day, being up all day, being a little bit jet lagged. But I was like, I will be damned if I don't see this Bellagio water show. And they do it every like 15 minutes after a certain time. I don't fucking know. But they they do a song. It's like a different song every time. Kind of like the Eras tour with her surprise songs. So I was like, what song is it going to be? The song we got was This Kiss, I believe. By Faith Hill. By Faith Hill. It's centrifugal motion. motion. It's perpetual bliss. This kiss, this kiss. <laughs> when it started, you turned to me and you were like, it's giving Hannah Montana. Because it was like, the beginning of that song definitely is giving Hannah Montana. It was a little um, lackluster at first. I just thought it was, it's free, first of all. So you can't really complain if something's free, right? But I don't know why I thought it would be more magnificent more incredible. I thought the water would be higher. At some point, it looked like they had it on low power mode. I was like, let's get these streams up a little higher, everybody. But at the parts where it was really high, if you look at it in comparison to where the hotel was, it was up like at least five floors. Maybe it was the place we chose to stand. I was going to say that as well. I think if you were like in a hotel room looking down on it, it would probably be cooler. Or if we were like direct middle, we were like, could not, we were like the furthest corner away from it. But I was like, I'm as close as I'm going to get tonight. I'm not walking any further. We were standing by the the dollar store, Mickey and Minnie Mouse, who were oh. trying to like rob people of their money. <laughs> oh my God. How scary are those, you guys? When you go on vacation, those are everywhere too. Those are in downtown LA. They're in New York City. They're in Boston. They're everywhere. Those people who dress up as like the, the, the dollar store Disney characters. And they're Minky. like, they're Minky and Minchie. Like, <laughs> Minky. they're just, weirdos and it's like that's a scary human being under there that's trying to get like ten dollars for a photo and the girl who was standing next to us like was she like wanted them to get away she's like no get away get, get away but and then the guy because it was so hot he lifted his little mascot thing off and she's like really in front of the kids i was like girl you didn't pay him shut your mouth like what are you talking why are you mad yeah and exactly i'm like you need to tell these kids right now teach that these are not the real minky and mini okay yeah. like these they should know better so that t this is a learning moment for them exactly. as well um yeah they were really scary the Bellagio show was, I'm going to give it a 4 out of 10. I was really expecting something a lot more magnificent. If you're if you're close by, go see it. But I, I think if it's your highlight of the night, it's going to be a low. I'll give it an 8.5 out of 10. I'm easy to please, and I was I was thoroughly entertained. Um, but you know what was more entertaining to me? The Bellagio lobby. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I think a really fun part about Las Vegas, if you've never been, or if you've been, is that like there most of the hotels are all in this like famous strip. It's different areas, right? But on this strip, you can kind of like just go into any single hotel and they all have a very dramatic, crazy theme. And the Bellagio's theme was just absolutely incredible. It was just ornate, the flowers, the beauty of it all. I thought that was more impressive than the water show itself. Yeah, it was giving like that love boat ride with the little swan that you get on. Yes, the very love ride. boat. I see yeah, that. Yeah, it was cute. It was romantic fountains everywhere. I really enjoyed it. Yep, so that was how we ended day one. Day two was a lot more relaxed. We kind of spent the day by the pool at the Wynn. We were like, hey, we're going to pay all this money for this, this hotel. We're going to use their amenities. The pool was great. I wish there was a little bit more shade yeah. as someone who is um, very pale. And, and 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 fearful of sunburns, I was reapplying like a madman, and it was just direct sun in the desert, ninety degree weather, and it was hot. But the pool was refreshing. The pool was massive, but not yeah. as massive as the Aperol spritz we got that came in like a Seven uh, Eleven big gulp. Yeah, well, she asked for the large; it was fifty dollars a cup, uh, so it was a hundred dollars for those two drinks. So, so did should, we get our money's be worth? In a big cup. I feel like we probably got a bottle of champagne each in those. Though we were sucking those for hours. Yeah, we honestly. were. And that's why we went to the pool bar after. In the course of a forty-five minute window, Jonathan spilled his drink and I spilled my drink on the bar top. Thank God they were both clear liquor, so nobody knew. <laughs> nobody knew. Yeah, I am definitely right now, currently in my um my swollen and spilling era. I like to think like thirty percent of the day I'm swollen somewhere on my body, and I'm definitely gonna spill a cup at least once a day. I really am. Like I'm knocking things over. What is going on with me i'm just clumsy i'm in my clumsy era you're in your clumsy era and you definitely have been getting a little bit more swollen 
in the hands when you drink. I'm noticing because yeah, of your what's rings. Yeah, what's happening? Should I see a doctor? I, guys, I wear rings. Someone diagnosed me right now. And when I drink, like I can't even wear the ring on my middle finger anymore because by the end of the night, it just won't come off. Well, it's not. There's no diagnosis here. It's just that's what happens to anyone that wears rings. You're just new to the ring game. Is this thirty? Is this life at thirty? No, it's when you. It's it's called drinking and oh, being dehydrated. I guess. Well, the pool was amazing at the win. I will say, guys, that was probably one of the highlights. Even though I wish I had some shade, they're like, if you want a thousand dollar cabana, you can get one. I'm like, guys, we already paid a lot of money to be here. Stop trying to take it up every point. There was a topless section of the um, pool. I was shocked. I took um, my top off. Yeah. Well, we had our tops off, but there were some women that had their tops off, and I was like. Okay, girls, go off. Let's legalize it. Let's normalize it. Well, it's not even that. It's the guys that are just like horrifyingly creepy. That's why people don't want to do it. Like we're not, we're allies here. I'm like, hey, free the nipple. But I, uh, they felt safe there, and I was in support. But I was a little shocked because there was no signage. It wasn't like, hey, entering nudietown.com. Yeah, it was just kind of like turn the corner. Mommy milk missiles everywhere. Mommy milk missile yabo yabos everywhere. But that was a fun part of it too. After that, we went up to the room and got ready for this. Super Bowl of the trip, the reason why we were there, to see the queen. The buffet. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No. I'm just kidding. To see Katy Perry. Ooh. So then we walk like a mile down the road to Resorts World uh, where Katie was having her residency. We get into the VIP meet and greet lounge. Guys, there's like sushi laid out for us. There's little candy kebabs. They have like those 90s Y2K inflatable chairs that somehow they made for adults that didn't pop when we sat down. I did not spill a drink there. Yeah, there's probably like, I don't know, like 20 of us there. And the only reason why we were at the meet and greet was because she upgraded our tickets. So she comes out and they already have us like all in a line and like people are going into their photos and at one point she catches my eye in line where I caught her eye basically and she looks at me and she gives me like this like dirty look but like in her Katie way where she like it was more like I recognize you like oh my god what are you doing here as if she didn't know and before before like we got there the day before I had already made a video about how I wanted to give her a shirt that we made her um, so when it was our time to get up in line, she was like, oh, oh my, god. my god, it was so funny. And we went up to be like, say hi to her. And then she's like, no, 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 get the cameras rolling. We know we need, you know, you know, you need this <laughs> she video. She knew. She knew. So a couple of people behind us in line were like, oh, give us our, give us your phone. We'll record it. So the camera starts and she, I go, oh my God. And she goes, Zachariah Porter. Guys, Katy Perry said my full name, I, I can't even believe it. I still get chills thinking about it. And she had seen the TikTok with the t-shirt and um, we got to give her the t-shirt and then we got to like chit chat with her for like, I would say once again, like a, like a good amount of time before we took photos with her. Yeah, and then so the shirts that we were wearing, you had made by um, an artist, Femme Lord, right? Yeah, Femme Lord out of Brooklyn. I asked for like airbrushed <laughs> artists like in New York if they would make this. She responded and she was she made two t-shirts for us and then one for Katie. And they were lyrics to one of her old songs, which um, I absolutely love. But it's like definitely a like a B-side that she never performs ever. The song is self-inflicted. And we had the lyrics on like both of our shirts and she knew right away and she was like acting like she didn't. She was like, oh, is that these wounds are self-inflicted? I was like, girl, it was 15 years ago. It wasn't that long ago. Like, come on, you know. So then we were standing to get our photos with her and she was like, oh, are you guys getting your, are you getting your sides? We were like, girl, we're just trying to make sure your lyrics are not messed up in the photo, girl. Yeah, she loves to like, just like, I don't know, like she kind of like, it's not like bullying, but it's more like, I don't know, like playful, like. Yeah, she's one of the boys. Yeah, she's one of the boys. We're like, I'm like literally having arm around her for the photo and she says, she's like, oh, you just unhooked my bra. And then I said to her, like I whispered, I was like, I've never done that before. And she goes, I know. It's like, <laughs> girl, please. And, Which, then and she wasn't just saying that like i heard it snap yeah like, we pose for the photo and her bra just goes <laughs> and then she made sick individuals in case of divorce yeah. like she was she's a spitfire that she one. is she's super super sweet though yeah and then after we took our photo she still talked to us for a little bit and and it was so awesome to like get to see her again i feel like i actually do have a rapport from her with her now so i feel like if we see her a third time that's when you know we're real, real friends. Okay, but then when she was performing, yes, she stopped after one of the songs and she said, "These wounds are self-inflicted." And she looked at us, yeah. and I, I couldn't believe it. She doesn't ever perform this song, so for her to just say that casually, she it was a was nod doing. to us, and it was a, it, like she does this show like what, like five days a week, some weeks depending on like the week or whatever. She's been doing this show for so long, she doesn't ever perform that song. So for her to say that was a little nod to us, and we were like five rows back, and at multiple points in the show, she'd like point or like look at us and at one point i was like no you're reading into that too much but now that i 
I don't know. I feel like she really like knew that we were there I and know. was just like playing it up a little yeah, bit. Yeah, hundred percent. We also like it was one of those situations where it's theater seating, but kind of standing. We were just, oh the Ed Sheeran show. Um, but yes, we definitely were not sitting the whole time. No, and people were sitting a lot of the show, and I stood the entire time, the entire time, because I was like, I'm here to see this woman. She upgraded her tickets. I want her to make eye contact with me the entire time, and I want her to know that we're here. So I stood the entire time. But lucky for us, there was two girls directly in front of us, directly in front of us, who also were crazy like us, and stood the entire time. So it was like this like little four pot of us, like, yeah. <laughs> the entire time oh, man, we we're definitely those girls the show was really fun you guys if you can see it this fall before it officially officially ends i would definitely recommend it it's a greatest hits tribute basically to her and the whole the whole set and the storyline and the costuming it's so vegas so katy perry oh i loved it i love her so much i really feel like we're friends now I know. <laughs> it's so crazy but uh, my closing thoughts on Vegas. Let's get some closing thoughts. Well, before I do that, I just want to let everybody know I was so hammered at the end of the show that you'll see in the vlog. But what you didn't see in the vlog is that when we got back to the room, oh. we ordered expensive room service. I got onion rings and a Reuben because you know me, I love a Reuben. And I proceeded to eat my Reuben and my onion rings with my eyes closed. Yeah, it was frightening. First time ever eating a sandwich like that with my eyes closed. The man came in with the cart and I was like, do not look at me. I'm so scared. So I tear my whole body over and then <laughs> Jonathan had to hand me onion rings because I was so messed up. But I feel like, did you go to Vegas if you didn't get fucked up? True. So it was a great trip. Overall, your thoughts? Um, they have a 24 hour CVS. And if that don't make your pussy throb, I don't know what will. It's a 24 hour CVS in New Bedford. Oh, well. It's so cool. It's so cool. It's so cool. No, I loved it. It was awesome. It was so fun. I feel like, I don't know. Did we have just enough time where it made us want to go back for more? Because hey, my bank account running dry on that place. Yeah. I feel like uh, anything over four days would be overkill. I would do, I would do a four day though. Cause I think I would have spent more time like not rushing through things and like really enjoying some of the casinos and resorts because I feel like we didn't have a lot of time to like really like soak it all in. You know what I mean? Caesars, I could have spent like another like six hours in there. I was really enjoying Caesars. Yeah, 100%. Overall, but huge Vegas fan. Strap in for the rest of the episode, you guys, because we have plenty of more Vegas content coming from you, us, and everyone in between. Love you. Attention campers, please meet at the old flagpole under the tall pine for morning announcements. Morning announcements, morning announcements, campers. This is the part of the show where we fill you in on the news that we think you need to know. Where would you like to take us today, Jonathan? Is it Vegas theme? I think I'm going to take you to Vegas, baby. Woohoo! Okay, so this is just, it's short, it's sweet. It's, you know, there was a lot of sad news coming out of Vegas. So I was like, let's keep it light and fluffy. So um, this uh, article is titled Pokemon Inspired Las Vegas Street Names Featuring Jigglypuff Place in Snorlax Lane. There is a new Nevada housing development. It's like 16 miles southeast from downtown Vegas. Vegas. And, Vegas. Uh, Vegas. 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 And the project construction manager, her name is Andrea Miller. And she's <laughs> Andrea Miller. <laughs> Andrea Miller is in charge of naming the streets. And she said her sons are obsessed with Pokemon, which I think is kind of crazy. Like all these years later and kids are still, I mean, I'm not complaining. It's great, great franchise, but I think it's kind of nuts because they're so obsessed well, with it. Well, they had the movie that came out like last year that the franchise is not going anywhere. Yeah, very true. Very true. So she said she was going to let her kids help her name the streets. So the streets are now named Charmander Lane, Charizard Lane, Jigglypuff Place, Snorlax Lane, and Squirtle Lane. And they all have like actual street names. Like the signs are up. They are up and they are posted. What are your thoughts on that? I don't know how I feel about living on Jigglypuff Lane as like an 84-year-old elderly woman who has to write that on a postcard. Um, yeah, yeah. But it's kind of fun, I guess. That's atrocious. I literally hate this so much. And I like am not a fan of Pokemon at all. But I just could not live on like... I would never purchase a home on Snorlax Lane. On Snorlax Lane, on Jigglypuff. You can't, w w that is so beyond. I think it's silly and fun, but to purchase actual property, absolutely not. That's like, I would never, I would never do that. 
It's also, I do wonder, like, what legalities, can you just name any street anything? Because I'm pretty sure Jigglypuff is, like, trademarked, if at it least is. registered. Yeah, well, if it is trademarked, then that would be an issue, but maybe it's not. Maybe it's open domain, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I wouldn't live on any TV show-themed lane. I think that's too much. I've even lived, I, one time I lived on Tinkham Street, Tinkham, and I hated the, the way that sounded. T-I-N-K-H-A-M. I, right now, our street is a very regal name street in New York, and I like that. I like it has a name with established bones, but the name means a lot to people okay and it could be like oh 50 50 if it's like kind of shitty but the house is okay but this is like okay i wouldn't even consider living on snorlax lane but you know what i'm sure there's plenty of people that would and to that i say go off we'll send you a christmas card so what uh what news story you've got for us um mine is also vegas themed a woman filed a lawsuit thursday against a las vegas wednesday after claiming she bit into a hamburger which contained pieces of glass like particles breaking her teeth um, and the lawsuit was filed in Clark County District Court. Okay. So a woman was in downtown Vegas on Rancho Drive near Craig Road. And she went through the drive through and she got a hamburger. Mm, also, why didn't she just get the cheeseburger? <laughs> People who get a hamburger are questionable to me. And I'm lactose intolerant, okay? You know my bowel history. But I will never not have the cheese on the burger. Yeah. So she bit into her burger. And she did say that it was hard and clear like glass particles in the court documents, which when she began to consume it, um, it was like a sharp, tremendous pain. And it was, it's funny. They say she, ex she experienced a tremendous sense of shock and fear as her hamburger was not juicy and tender as expected. Like they didn't have to put all that in there. <laughs> Wait, wh what restaurant is this? Wendy's. Okay. Wendy's. But instead consisted of hard and clear like glass particles that not only created loud crunching and breaking sounds, but in fact, these hard and glass like particles actually broke many of Miss Hastings' teeth. And did she swallow? I know she didn't. I didn't have this part like copied and pasted into the art, this little document here, but I think she spit it right into the napkin. Mm. So the court's going up. Guess how much she's suing for? One million. Fifteen thousand. Oh. Yeah, I was a little shocked too. Cause as you've seen on this show, you guys, we talk about a lot of these kind of like frivolous lawsuits. Maybe this is one isn't, we don't really know. Here's Did we talk about this one before? No, we talked about the mac and cheese one, the easy math. Like I was suing for like a million dollars because oh. it wasn't like as directed. It would take more than four minutes. To, okay. You, whatever. Long, long story on that one. But I think $15,000 to have your teeth shattered because of the reasonable. glass. I think it is reasonable. And I think if Wendy's was smart, they would just send 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 me on my way and just write the check on this one. Mm, mm -hmm. I think she could have asked for a lot more, especially if there is grounds. Because if I bite into a burger and have and my teeth start to break, not only the pain, but then the, going we are talking about this. Going to the dentist is awful. Yeah, it's so, awful, but nothing's worse than having a piece of glass cut open your esophagus as you swallow. So thankfully that didn't happen. Yeah, but when you break your teeth, you can't glue them back together. So the, her only option here is to get like an implant, okay? That alone, if she doesn't have insurance, is going to cost $15,000. She should have multiplied the $15,000 by five for pain and suffering because it's probably going to cost her $15,000 to fix her mouth if she doesn't have insurance. Yeah. And then she needs another forty five k just to kind of get over this, okay? Yeah. I say hit them where it hurts. I'm not a huge fan of Wendy's. As you guys know, it's, it's, my, it's at the bottom of the totem pole when it comes to the big three. McDonald's, Burger King, and Wendy's. The Holy Trinity. The Holy Trinity. So I'm going to say I think she has a case here, and I think she's going to get the money. Wendy's was not available for comment. <laughs> did they, you reach out to Wendy? I did, and they never are. I DM them on Twitter. I said, mm. hello, we we're talking about this on the show, and they said, scene. Um, <laughs> no, I'm joking. I didn't actually reach out. But Jennifer Hastings, we at Camp Shady Birch stand with you and your broken teeth. Get out of the water and onto the dock. You're not going to believe what I just heard. Welcome back. To gossip talk. This is the part of the show where you can <laughs> write in your tea, your drama, something you want to get off your chest, and you can write it at campcounselorspodcast.com or email it to campcounselorspod at gmail.com, and we might read it on the show. Jonathan put on our story while we were on our vacation to Vegas, but like, hey, if you have a lot of Vegas tea or funny Vegas stories, please send them in to us so we can read it on the show. And there was an influx of incredible stories, but... We got a lot, so unfortunately we couldn't read every single one, but thank you all for submitting. Well, we did read every single one. We read most of them. We yeah. didn't read every I, single one. I read 15 on the airplane, but this one I thought was... It made me laugh. It made me chortle, as I would say. So this one really made me giggle, and I had to choose this one. I'm sorry if yours wasn't picked, but thank you for sending them in. Here here we go. Once upon a time in the year 2013, my girlfriends and I took a trip to see Britney Spears at Planet Hollywood. Do you remember that era? 
Britney yeah. Spears in Vegas. Yeah. Now we know it was against her will, which is really upsetting. But I do remember that being iconic. Mm-hmm. I feel like Britney Spears really put the modern day pop star on the map to have a residency. She was like the first one, I feel like, of our new generation to be like, I'm having a Vegas show. She paved the way for Katie. Maybe. maybe. I remember Mariah Carey had her there before her. Yeah, now. but Mariah Carey is before Britney. I'm talking about the, the modern day pop I star. See, I She's of the see. 90s. Uh, we were recent grads and barely had enough to cover the tickets, let alone a suite. So we crammed the five of us into a room with two queen size beds. Listen, you gotta do what you gotta do. The night we arrived, we were scrambling to make our reservations at Sugar Factory, as one did in Vegas in 2013. <laughs> Sugar Factory was it. While also trying to get decently buzzed before we left. Again, we were broke and couldn't afford drinks at the club. Girl, no shame in your game here because it is an expensive place to be. While we were going in and out of the room, filling the ice bucket for our pregame cocktails, we left the door latch so we had easy access to the room. We eventually left for dinner and stayed out until the wee hours of the morning before we stumbled drunkenly into bed. So they left that little, like, it's it's, it's only called a latch, right? That yeah. little, like, door stopper thing. Mm-hmm. You guys know what I'm talking about. Every hotel has them on the door. They, so they left it open when they went out? Yeah, because they were going back and forth so much to get ice while they were in the room. Oh, and I think that they were drunk when they left that they kind of just, like, didn't realize uh, they didn't shut all the way because it was open the whole time. Well, who was out last? I want to talk to them. I know, because I don't know how drunk you'd have to be to forget that. But it, It's loud, too. You know when it slaps against that? Hey, somebody did. All right. The next morning, we woke up to the most horrendous smell any of us had ever experienced. One by one, we each got up to use the bathroom where the smell originated from to freshen up. But as time went on, the smell persisted to the point where I needed to get to the bottom of it. I started examining our open concept bathroom that comprised of a vanity, jacuzzi tub, and a separate room for the toilet and shower. I Classic. love a bathroom with a separate room for the mm-hmm. toilet and a hotel. I can shit in peace. Um, a private dumper, if you will. In the stink closet. I was sniffing around, expecting to find a rogue splash of vomit or something, but what happened next was so much worse. Wait, can I guess what it was? What? No, I don't know. Now I'm nervous. <laughs> Inside the tub under a hand towel was the biggest pile of shit I've ever <laughs> seen in my life. The sheer girth told me it came from a large man or maybe a grizzly bear. In my shock state, I called one of the girls over to look at it since I couldn't believe my eyes. Oh my God. My next response was panic. We couldn't call anyone. I didn't want to be on the hook for defecating in the room. What would that fee be? Like, what would the money cost? Yeah. The room was in my name, and we already overextended the amount of people on the reservation. I thought my only option was to dispose of the imposter shit myself. I covered myself in plastic bags and picked up the poop, telling myself it was just like cleaning up after a dog. After, I realized this was an act of terrorism. I called the front desk and reported the incident, and we were immediately given a new room. The next day, I got a call from the hotel management asking me to come down to see them. They said they didn't have the camera in the hallway, so they couldn't see who did the crime. And however, But however, this sort of thing happened on occasion. They did have a record of when the door locks and unlocks, and it appeared that we had left the door open from when we left for dinner until we returned from the club. In that time, someone walked by our room, saw the door was open, ignored all the valuables, and took the largest shit known to man in our tub, and then covered it with a hand towel to hide it, as a prank. To apologize for the inconvenience, the hotel gave us two free passes to the buffet. Overall, it's not my worst Vegas story, but it definitely has the most memorable, probably because of the smell. Hope you had a better time at Katy Perry. XOXO, who's shit in the tub in cabin three? Okay, that could have gone so much worse. Yes, they weren't robbed. It was just a weird shitter. And you know what? I feel like that person may have just been teaching them a lesson. Could have been like, hey, someone was in here. I'm going to let you know. I'm not going to steal any of your things, but I'm going to let you know that this could have been a much worse situation. Lock your doors. I know, but who in their right mind is like, I'm here to teach you a lesson. Like, just mind your fucking business and keep walking. Why are you going to shit in someone's tub? It is also kind of crazy that they didn't have a camera in that hallway. I love how they were like, hey, this kind of stuff this has happens. happened before. We've had a couple shitters in the a couple shitters in the hotel. So, yeah, I thought it was really funny. I'm glad the girls were safe and nothing bad actually happened beyond having to pick it up like a piece of dog poop. Yeah. But I, I like hate the idea of them being like, oh, no, we already have too, too many people in the room. So now we can't be honest about like what's happening. And also, who's to say it wasn't one of the girls in the room? Like someone could have just been like, oh, my God, that's so embarrassing. I was so drunk. I forgot that I did that. And then she was just playing it off like, oh, my God, who was that? It wasn't me. 
I know, but sometimes the sheer size of that kind of thing can only come out of a grizzly man, you know? And, and maybe one of the girls had had fun at Sugar Factory. And <laughs> she said, oh my God, the cotton candy really ran through me. Yeah, the, the chocolate factory for sure. It, it The whole story just screams 2013 and I'm obsessed with it. Um, to that camper who had experienced that, we stand with you and we salute you. And um, you can be our honorary um, janitor at Camp Jenny Birch. <laughs> We'll call you to unclog the toilets because you have a lot of experience in the excrement department. Grab your bug juice and bear spray campers. It's time to pack it up and take a hike. Welcome back to Take a Hike. This is the part of the show where we tell something to take a hike. We're going to be talking about the things that have been grinding our gears and we're just going to bitch a little. Let us bitch, okay? Please. So my take a hike is uh, certain people at buffets so let's talk about buffet etiquette Mm -hmm. real quick i feel like it's inevitable no matter what buffet you go to if there are crab legs there is going to be a man with a napkin tucked in his shirt and he's standing there with his plate over his belly and he's waiting for that fresh pot to come out then as it comes out he's going to take about 50 percent of the stock and leave nothing for the rest of the people karma's coming your way okay that is annoying If you're one of the people who bypasses the serving spoon and uses your hands, which I did see. You saw someone do that? I did, but it was for like, um, it was for like, it wasn't rolls, but it was like bread stuff. So I guess. That's not okay. No, it's It's not not okay. okay. I don't care what it was. It was not okay. No. So karma's coming for you if you're doing that too. One time, not, not at this trip, but I did in fact see somebody duck their head under the sneeze guard. And go through the salad bar. I saw that happen once. I also saw a little kid get fistfuls of ham cubes from the salad bar. First off, ham cubes. Take a hike in their own. Okay. And if you're one of those people, you need to take a hike. Uh, Yeah, if you have kids also at a buffet, let's keep an eye on them. Because they are nasty and they're sticking their fingers in all the fondue. Okay. Yeah, I made that buffet video, Ranking the Wind Buffet, which the Wind Buffet was amazing. Mm-hmm. I will say the food there was incredible. But um, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I do feel like uh, buffets are gross in general. I had a couple people comment that they would never go to a buffet because of the other people at the buffet. And that's what it is, really. Yeah, because you can protect your peace and be a good person, but you don't know who was right there before you and their, and, and their, and their cleanliness. Yeah. Um, I, I'm willing to take the risk. I'm willing to make the jump. Yeah, and I think it is too, you know, it it did take a whole pandemic for a lot of straight men to wash their hands after using the bathroom, which is kind of crazy to me. But yeah, you got to be conscious of all these things. I think maybe we should normalize wearing gloves while eating. That could be nice. Ew, I would hate to do that. Well, regardless, the buffet can be fun, but it can also be scary. So just make sure you're safe out there, guys, okay? Keeping it on Vegas theme, um, my take a hike this week is people that have lied to me my entire life about the feeling of dry heat. Heat. Okay. If you don't know, I'm a very clammy person. I'm a sweaty spaghetti man. I'm always hot. I sweat in an igloo. Um, so my entire life, I've always been told, well, it's really humid right now, and that's why you're so hot. But if you were ever in the desert, dry heat would be a lot different. It doesn't have that humidity level. And I was always being like, okay, like one day I'll finally experience that, and I'll know for myself, is it actually more tolerable for a sweaty person like myself? And it's not. It's not. I got off that plane, you guys. It was 95 degrees, and it still feels like 95 fucking degrees, okay? This whole idea of dry heat being le- – maybe it's a little better, but it still sucks. Yeah. Okay? Walking around Vegas is exhausting because of the sheer amount of, like, heat. It feels like – a weighted blanket on you. Okay? Feels like a desert almost. It, uh, yeah, it feels a little bit like a desert. No, it just it, it dries you out in a different way, and you're still sweating now. You know mm. what I mean? You're probably losing more fluids because you're still sweating, and it's just sucking the moisture out of you. I can only imagine people's skin there aging. Like I don't even know. Most Old of the cl- the rare clouds that are in the sky are probably just made out of people's sweat. Yeah, it's not fun, and I just think people have been lying my entire life. So if you've ever told me, well, you've never experienced dry heat then I'm you're taking a hike this week because if you've never had it, you guys don't let anybody fool you. It is not that much better. It still sucks. Do you think the new counselor likes the top bunk or the bottom bunk? Over. Either way, I'm giving them my boondoggle keychain. Over. Welcome back to Crush of the Week. Vegas edition, baby. These are things that are the complete opposite of take a hike because we love them so much and want you to love them as well. So we're going to share that with you, Jonathan. Who are you crushing on? What are you crushing on? Who do you want to kiss? 
So my crush of the week is a movie that I watched on the flight on our way to Vegas. Ironically, it takes place in Florida, but my crush of the week is the movie Barb and Star Go to Vista Del Mar. Love that movie. Oh my God. It came out in 2021 and it stars Kristen Wiig and Annie Mamolo. I'm probably saying that wrong. So sorry, Annie. But it is so funny. It's very much like um, Bridesmaids, I would say, but a lot more dumb and stupid, but it's like, I feel like if you guys think this podcast is funny, then you get our sense of humor clearly. So you might think this is funny. It got bad reviews. It got bad ratings because it's just so dumb. Rolling Stone magazine said that it felt like a DOA SNL skit, which I can't say I don't agree with because it really just feels like a skit that went on for a little too long. But the one-liners and it's just so chaotic and stupid and Kristen Wiig just makes me laugh so hard. I also wonder how much of the movie is just like ad-libs or they're just like bullshitting most of the time. And the Spanish teacher from That So Raven um, was in like a couple scenes. She had one line and it's the one line that you and I repeat to each other and she's like, I don't like sitting in wicker chairs, but I like looking at them. And it's just so <laughs> stupid. I don't know. I love it. I think it's a great movie. I think you should check it out. I was thinking about all the things that brought me joy this week. There was a lot on the trip that brought me joy. But I was like, this movie had me giggling again and again. I just, I love it. It's a comfort movie for me. I guess I understand why Barb and Star gets like really bad reviews because it is stupid. Like it's the probably one of the dumbest movies I've ever seen in my entire life. But I like stuff like yeah, that. I think it's funny. Mm -hmm. And I think Kristen Wiig is one of the best like SNL cast members of all time, if not the best. Yeah. So we're a huge fan of this house. If you're into stupid, silly comedies, I'm trying to think of something like in relation. Because you can, the only comparison I can make it to is like kind of bridesmaids meets like napoleon dynamite meets stepbrothers like that kind of like just ridiculous see but i didn't like stepbrothers yeah and that doesn't make sense to me because it's an amazing film i don't know why you don't like that mary steenburgen is like the mom and she's the best and will ferrell come on i think my brother just like made me watch it one too many times where i'm just like okay it's not funny look at all the space for activities hilarious well i'm not gonna get down this road because i could fight this to the death okay. but i do think barb and star going to visit del mar i think it's on amazon prime right now mm -hmm. is one to watch great choice baby yeah thank you or it's it's on the delta flight if you're ever <laughs> if you ever find yourself there if you're flying delta so what uh what are you crushing on i'm crushing on a dessert a dessert I've never had before. Mm. A dessert that changed my world. You guys know I'm always down for a little sweet treat. So when we were at the Venetian, we went inside for dinner and it's like this gorgeous, like painted, like whole like downtown fake little like marketplace. Yeah, it's like fake outside. Village Square. And there's a restaurant there. It's called the Mercado de la Pescheria which probably means fish of the day market, I would assume. Um, it's like a little like restaurant in this fake town square. And the, the meal was great, right? I, I, what did I have for you? What did you have for dinner? I had, I had the, the gnocchi. I had the best cop, cob chopped Italian salad of my life. It was amazing, but that wasn't it, you guys. Because the meal itself was amazing. The calamari, it was all great. But then I went to the bathroom and Jonathan told the waiter, he said, um, can you just bring us a little dessert? Because Zach's going to want a sweet treat. It was a lovely surprise. When I came back, I was like, babe, I'm so full. I don't know if I could do it. And then you were like, you like tiramisu, right? And I do. I, Jonathan, for future reference, I don't love tiramisu. It's definitely not on my radar ever for a dessert. I didn't order the tiramisu. He said that, he's like, I have a surprise. Like, if you want me to surprise you with with something for dessert i said sure oh so he recommended <clears throat> it yes. well he did a good job yeah because i'm not a huge tiramisu fan but have you guys ever had table side tiramisu because i hadn't and it changed our lives yeah move over guacamole there's a new bad bitch in town okay the waiter brings over what appears to be like a platter of different toppings right so in this little kind of rectangle container are the classic lady fingers and they're fresh okay and they're by itself so then he proceeds to pour the espresso over the lady fingers, okay? And then takes a bowl out of this little tray and starts whipping up as fast as he can the mas mascarpone mm -hmm. cream and then pours that over the top of it, okay? And then takes this giant hunk of like chocolate. I've never seen like a block of chocolate like this and starts graining it like Parmesan cheese. He created a tiramisu from scratch directly in front of me. My fucking God, you guys, it knocked my socks off. I ate the entire thing. You had one bite. You're like, I'm, it's too rich. I'm too full. I was like, hand it over like a gorilla. <laughs> oh my God. Okay, it's on the Patreon if you're really curious, you guys. Jonathan will put a little clip here, but um, it was insane. It yeah. was like, I had never heard of it. Now I'm thinking, 
what else can we do table side? Because it's such a fun, fun, fun activity. Creme brulee. Mm, yeah, you could do that. But it's not that exciting because it's just torching. You know what I mean? We torched before. And what if we torch it like figgy pudding and you just like light it on fire? We've seen guacamole. And you know what we've also seen a lot of that I'm over? That I've never even had, but I'm just over it. The pasta in the hot cheese wheel. Yeah. And they're turning it and, it, <clears throat> and it's like sauce in the pasta. When I first saw that on Instagram in 2016, it blew my socks off as well. But it's been there, done that. I have never seen tableside tiramisu. It was my crush of the week. My God, you guys. I'm not even a huge fan of tiramisu, but this... Changed my life. What song's been stuck in your head all week? Welcome to Camp Songs. Welcome back to Camp Songs. This is the part of the episode where we talk about the songs that have been stuck in our head all week. I feel like mine is like, it's it's par for the course. Obviously, I had to do this one. It's Self-Inflicted by Katy Perry, which were the lyrics on the shirts that we that we made and we were wearing. Um, so if you haven't heard it, highly recommend. Uh, we do have a playlist on Spotify as well as on YouTube. You can listen for free. And the lyrics, it's just a song about like a girl who she's like, hey, I know this man's going to break my heart. He's going to rip it into pieces. He's going to stomp on it. But I'm going to choose to keep going back to him in a somewhat healthy way. I don't know. I think it's a great song. It's really catchy. And um, these wounds are self-inflicted. One more thing I'm addicted to. Yeah, this is the Katy Perry part of the show is. We had to do Katy Perry for both of our songs because it's the Vegas episode. We saw Katy and Self-Inflicted was the fucking t-shirts we wore to the show. Of course, we had to add it in the playlist. Mm -hmm. It's such a good one, you guys. It's classic Katy. It's pop punk. She just really gives it her all. And as you know, it's it's definitely a B-side and she didn't even remember the lyrics when we saw her in real life, which she was lying about, okay? Yeah, She definitely knew. She's just so silly, but I love that song. Obviously, we have merch of it now. All right, so what is your camp song? Uh, my camp song of the week is also going to be Katy Perry for obvious reasons, sticking on theme here. My song is called Daisies by Katy Perry. Classic. Are you familiar with it? I am, and I didn't love it when it first came out, but you changed my mind. Too. I am a sucker for any sort of motivational music. It really just sets my soul on fire. I'm going to read you a few lyrics, you guys, because they are really powerful. And I thought when I first heard the song, too, I was like, I don't know if I'm going to love it as much as I do. But when you really think about it, it's it's really inspiring. Told them your dreams and they all started laughing. I guess you're out of your mind till it actually happens. I'm the small town, one in seven billion. Why can't it be me? They told me I was out there, tried to knock me down, took those sticks and stones, Showed them I could build a house. They told me that I'm crazy, but I'll never let them change me. They covered me in daisies, daisies, daisies. It's just a song about being like, you know what? Why can't I be that bitch? Why can't I be that person? Like, it has to be somebody, and I'm going to let that person be me. And I've lived my entire life doing this career of content creation, thinking to myself, like, you know what? If you don't believe it, no one else is going to fucking believe it. You have to believe in yourself first before anyone else is going to believe in you. And this song really emulates that idea, and I think it's a powerful, it's a throat screamer. You know me, guys. I love a throat screamer song with the windows down. This is one to watch. I don't think it's definitely in her top 10 canon of her best music, in her opinion. I think for for me personally, I really identify more with this than the iconic roar. I think a lot of people love like, I got the eye of the tiger ride. Yeah. I think people love that one. It's like their motivational Katie song. This one happens to be mine, Daisies by Katy Perry. And wasn't she pregnant while filming the, yes. the music video and named her child Daisy? It was all of the missing pieces right there of yeah. the riddle. That's why I think it has a powerful connotation. I think she probably loves it because of that as well. Yeah. She looks stunning in that. She is like the shoulder length blonde hair. Mm-hmm. It's definitely grow down a little bit from her traumatic. We, we're not big fans of when Katie went short on prism. us. Prism. Yeah, the prism era guys when Katie had that short like blonde like pixie cut. That was not my favorite Katie, Katie era, but I'm a Katie head. So Katie, are they called Katie cats? Katie cats. Katie cats. I'm a Katie cat through and through, so I stuck with her. But this is a newer um, Katie Perry song, but I love it. Scary stories around the campfire. Welcome back. To scary stories on the Las Vegas Strip. This is the part of the show where we share a scary story sent in by you campers. Um, obviously, it's Vegas themed. And this is kind of similar to the last story that we read for Gossip Talk, but in a very spooky way. I read this and I was terrified. I was like, Jonathan, you gotta read this one. Take it away, baby. All right. So this camper writes... My husband and I were staying at Treasure Island and we pushed the latch out the door to keep it from locking while we went to get ice. 
guys, it's a tale as old as time. Let's not just bring your key card with you. I promise it'll be worth it, okay? So they were going to go get ice to use for sexy time Vegas stuff. And yada, yada, yada. We're asleep now. I hear the door close and I pop up out of bed to see this shadow figure in the room at the foot of the bed. I thought it was my husband, so I asked him what he was doing. He shushed me to go back to sleep. I asked what was wrong, and he said he lost his wallet and he was looking for it. So I laid back down and went to sleep. Then I heard the door close. I asked my husband, who was asleep next to me, if he had found his wallet. He sat up, confused, and said, no, why? I said, you were just looking for it a couple seconds ago. He popped up and he said, no, he wasn't. So someone must have come in the room. Sobering up out of sleep, we both flew up out of bed, threw on the lights, and started searching the room. And sure enough, both our wallets and phones were gone. We were totally robbed. We contacted the front desk, but there was nothing that they could do. I'm sure they could have looked at some CCTV footage. There was nothing they could do. Absolutely nothing they could do. Um, Keep going. I'll say some stuff after. Okay. We had to close everything, which I think she's talking about bank accounts and stuff. And we were stuck in Vegas for 24 hours without any money or phones. We were stunned. Just wandered around like zombies. Those are close to Katy Perry lyrics. (laughs) Later, like years later, my first time back in Vegas since... I was at a conference sharing a room with my colleague and she talks in her sleep. It scared the bejesus out of me, but I popped up out of bed screaming my head off from the PTSD and she got pissed at me and she wanted to change rooms. I would want to change rooms too, okay? Listen, if you're not understanding of me of why I'm freaking out while you're talking in your sleep, I would want to change rooms to begin with. No, she wanted to change rooms. The colleague wanted to change rooms. That's what I'm saying. So I'm like, what? okay, you want to change rooms? Well, I want to change rooms. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, anywho... I'm cured, but I definitely will check the door OCD style before going to bed in a hotel. Signed, Ice Sex Scandal. Uh, I'm not going to say the person's name in cabin eight. Oh, I you know. I think I, I really think like the latching of the door has been the real the real culprit of these Vegas stories. The thing is with Vegas, and I don't want to be dark here, but we're going to get there for a minute. I think it's a dark city. I think there's a lot of a bad juju there. I think people go there and kind of like ruin their lives with the gambling and stuff like that. So if you're really down your luck and you're desperate and you walk by a hotel room in the middle of the night and it's open and you're thinking to yourself, I bet I can go in there and rob them really fast. That's what happened. So I think they snuck in and then they left. So you're saying that you think the latch was still in the door that's when what, they went to sleep. That's exactly what the story says. I don't think it's what the story said. They were They were latching it to go get ice and then they came back. So in my head, if they went to go get ice together while the door was latched, somebody may have snuck in and like hid under the bed the whole time. I think they left the latch open by accident. I think if we reread it, we could find that out. Either way, they were robbed. Yeah. And it's unfortunate. And, and the, it sucks. Walking around like zombies with no cash and no phone is like just, how do you even get home? Yeah, how do you get home without your ID? What do you do? I know. Oh, my God. Be careful in Vegas, you guys, because there are scary people there. Keep your wits about you. And like you said, bring the hotel key card with you to the ice room. It's not that hard, and it is worth it. And we found out two reasons why, you guys. This was the Vegas episode. Thanks for tuning in this week. We love you so freaking much. We'll see you next week on Camp Counselors. With that being said, lights Lights out, out, campers. campers.